Video game franchises experience just as many highs and lows as those in any other medium, but they're all so unique in that they have the chance to make amends in unique ways. While a film or TV show can retcon an unpopular storyline or simply take the piss with it in some respects, anyone remember Community's gas leak year? Games can go much further by engaging the player in one of those barbs. Actually getting in on the act of mocking a once-hated mechanic, feature, or plot point can restore good faith between a studio and a fanbase. But it can also illustrate how developers have innovated on a given concept. These hated mechanics weren't game-breaking by any means, but they were occasionally frustrating and, in some cases, lampooned heavily by fans and critics to the point where they necessitated a direct response. Sort of like how we have to apologize every time Scott launches a weapons-grade take in Chatty Faces. Oh, Halo Infinite. Yeah, it is infinite at this point. Yeah, just end it. So GTA V is terrible. It's the elite chaps with yeah. the energy sword things. They just suck. It's just a lot of spamming. It's just spamming the game. In one fell swoop, they single-handedly destroyed any goodwill around Pokemon Sword and Shield practically overnight. Nash a shotgun. Sorry, Scott. In some instances, set responses can be so big that they actually invent an entire new mechanic altogether, as was the case with 2005's Ultimate Spider-Man, or even govern how an intro plays out, like in Far Cry 5. Studios are constantly learning from their own mistakes, and if they can have a sense of humor about it too, well, that's all the better. So, I'm Ewan, this is War Culture Gaming, and here are seven video game sequels that mocked mechanics fans hated. Number 7. The Driving, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas Driving in the Grand Theft Auto series has always been a tough nut to crack. For some, Rockstar didn't get it right until GTA V, a whole decade after Grand Theft Auto 3 released on consoles. However, long before Rockstar ostensibly perfected their driving mechanics in the 8th generation of consoles, they had a barb aimed directly at GTA 3's driving in the following entry, dubbed San Andreas. In the game's 7th mission, when CJ is linking up with other members of the Grove Street families to perform a drive-by, Ryder takes the opportunity to chastise the player for their poor driving saying that the East Coast made him, quote, Drive like an idiot, fool! Granted, San Andreas' driving wasn't anything to write home about either, but this is still a pretty great gag all the same. Number 6. Where's your sense of pride and accomplishment? Assassin's Creed Odyssey Although every other example on this list references video games that have felt the need to make a joke about the past misfortunes of their own series, Ubisoft embarked on a whole other level of cognitive dissonance by taking aim at EA Star Wars Battlefront reboot in Assassin's Creed of all places. In the very definition of Spider-Man points at himself meme, Odyssey has a quest that satirizes in-game microtransactions and pay-to-win video games. The player has to acquire tokens, and after encountering a few figures that would let them purchase a token with in-game currency, the final person of interest refuses to bargain. When Alexios or Cassandra queries regarding the prospect of simply buying the token, the character responds with a degree of shock, questioning why the player wishes to, quote, play to win. They then ask where their honor is, as well as their sense of, quote, pride and accomplishment. Where is your sense of pride and accomplishment? A specific nod towards EA's infamous Reddit comments that attempted to defuse the furor surrounding Battlefront 2 microtransaction heavy launch, only to become the most downvoted comment in the website's history. It's a bit of an odd jab to make given UB's repeated use of microtransactions in their own titles, but it does at least mock a hated mechanic in a video game sequel. If only they could apply their own logic to their storefront along the way. Number 5. The Mako's Out of Commission, Mass Effect 2 Bioware's beloved Mass Effect might not be doing so hot in the wake of Andromeda, but that doesn't take away from just how good those first three games were, at least for the most part. Consensus dictates that the first sequel, Mass Effect 2, was the franchise's best entry, and Consensus would be right. The first game, while innovative, also happened to have the Mako, a horrendous all-terrain transport that handled like ass and deserves to be consigned in the deepest, darkest black hole in the Andromeda Galaxy. Seriously, I hate the Mako like I've hated no other machine unleashed by man. It would be banned by the Space Geneva Conventions if I had my own way. So greatly did it ruin my enjoyment of that first Mass Effect. That in mind, it shouldn't come as a surprise that the Mako didn't make it back for the sequel. In fact, Bioware went out of their way to mock the notorious vehicle in Mass Effect 2's Lair of the Shadow Broker DLC. During gameplay, the R remarks that the player's new chosen vehicle, the air car, is still better than the Mako. You okay? Still better than the Mako. Number 4. Raiden is a badass, actually. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty is one of the best entries in the Metal Gear series, but it debuted to a divisive response from hardcore fans. 
The decision to replace longtime protagonist Solid Snake with Raiden was met with praise and criticism. Mostly criticism, but it's a change that was vindicated in the years following Sons of Liberty's release. As longtime fans began to reappraise the title, and Raiden embarked on a resurgence of his own a decade later. Platinum Games' Metal Gear Rising Revengeance focused on Raiden's most badass qualities, mocking the initial backlash the character met by turning him into a veritable badass. Revengeance's Raiden contrasts greatly from the one seen in Sons of Liberty, and that effort to change the character could only have been accomplished with a knowing glance in the direction of MGS2, where he was often indecisive and timid. This is my real hair, okay? Number 3. John Marston Still Can't Swim – Red Dead Redemption 2 it might be a stretch to say that Rockstar were actively mocking themselves in this specific instance, but there's no way they chose to make sure that John Marston couldn't swim in Red Dead Redemption 2 without a knowing wink to the first game. Marston is the protagonist of the first Red Dead Redemption, which released in 2010. Rockstar sort of had a thing for their characters not being able to swim, and John, were he ever unfortunate enough to find a body of water in the dry prestiges of New Austin, would drown if he ever entered. Of course, Red Dead Redemption 2, which is actually a prequel titling Conventions Be Damned, featured a new protagonist in Arthur Morgan who could of course swim. Without any context, it would be easy to look at Morgan's aquatic competence as being just another area where the studio innovated on the previous entry. But when the perspective switches to John, he still can't swim. Heck, in one of the few missions he spent with John as Arthur, he'll even chastise Marston for his aquatic failings and the fact he can't even herd cattle either. Can't herd, can't swim. Give it a rest, will you? Bear in mind the game is set over a decade before the events of the first game, and you have a logical story-driven reason for why John can't swim. He couldn't in 1911, so he shouldn't be able to in 1907. It's just one of those things players have to laugh at, and no doubt something Rockstar had some fun with when they decided to keep John's inability to swim for the prequel. Number 2. Climbing Those Towers – Far Cry 5 The Far Cry series is not unlike Ubisoft's other games in that it's beholden to the publisher's formulaic approach to AAA titles. That's not a slight against Ubi. They've crafted some of the most enjoyable games of the last two console generations from said approach, but it hasn't always worked. Far Cry 3 was a flash-in-the-pan success for the France-based company. It boasted an enigmatic antagonist in Vas, portrayed to perfection by Michael Mando. I am uh, a big fan of your work compelling shooting mechanics, and a stunning-looking world. Yubi had a proper success on their hands, and so a sequel, Far Cry 4, was released in 2014, two years after Far Cry 3, and about a year after its brilliant and the uncovered expansion, Blood Dragon. While successful, the game also wasn't surprising in the slightest, and while it was at this point that Yubi's open-world formula would become more and more noticeable, exemplified in full by the towers players had to take control to reveal more of the map. Conscious of the hate for the towers, Yubi included a brilliant bait and switch in Far Cry 5, by having players unblock one tower at the beginning that then revealed the entire map, or with a few jokes along the way. I know what you're thinking, and no. I ain't gonna have you climbing towers all over the county for me. And number one, the Balloon Children, Ultimate Spider-Man. Although most tend to hail Spider-Man 2 as the Web Slinger's best adventure on the sixth generation of consoles, Ultimate Spider-Man is just as good, if not better. Treyarch's soul-shaded take on Brian Bendis and Mark Bagley's award-winning Ultimate Spider-Man comics brought back everything there was to love about Spider-Man 2 and added to it by including the suburb of Queens, crossovers with other Marvel characters, and even a story where you could play as Venom. The swinging was perfect, there were plenty of petty crimes to stop, and there was enough to distinguish Spidey and Venom apart to make the dual campaign feel worthwhile. But Treyarch didn't just innovate on their previous efforts. No, they had to have a little laugh at its expense too. Anyone who's played Spider-Man 2 will know that not all the petty crimes were particularly enjoyable to play, with the sinking ships caught in the Hudson especially frustrating. However, the biggest meme of all ended up being the game's balloon child, who would taunt the player with cries of, My balloon! And balloony! until Spidey managed to rescue their favorite helium-based possession. It was hilariously irritating, and so, in the sequel, Treyarch decided that the balloon children would be snacks for Venom. Yay, yep, you literally eat the balloon kid to keep up your health. Revenge doesn't get any better. And that was our list on Times Video Game Sequels Mocked Hated Mechanics. I'm really curious to hear if anyone else has any other examples, and if so, please be sure to leave them in the comments below. Once you've done that, make sure you've liked the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want more, and head back on over to whatculture.com forward slash gaming for more lists and articles like this every day. I've been Ewan, you can find me rambling about games and other stuff on Twitter at Ewan Ruins Things, and I hope you have a great day. Until next time though, bye!